Welcome to the Experience and Exportcast, episode number 31. Life is full of experiences and it's good you learn from the experience of others. The title of this episode is Does Attitude Really Determine Altitude? Does Attitude Really Determine Altitude? In this podcast, I debunk the notion that good attitude will enable you to achieve anything without corresponding hard work. I'm Paul Uduk. I help writers and aspiring authors get started and write better books through Book Writing Clinic and Book Writers Club. I'm also the creator of Internet Business Mastery course where I show aspiring online entrepreneurs how to succeed at scale online. I'm also the creator of OCNA, online course creators community for newbies and advanced beginners on Facebook with over 12,700 members from all over the world. A very popular pastor years back proclaimed your attitude determines your altitude. Zig Ziglar wrote in his book, See You at the Top. It's your attitude, not your aptitude, that determines your altitude. Keith Harrell's book screams, Attitude is everything. 10 life-changing steps to turning attitudes into action. Jeff Keller, not to be outdone, goes a step further and shouts, attitude is everything. Change your attitude, change your life. Two of the fathers of modern motivational literature, Napoleon Hill, and W. Clement Stone had, in 1960, written what many consider the definitive treatise on attitude when success through a positive mental attitude was published. Though it didn't have the word attitude in its title, Del Carnegie's book, how to win friends and influence people was on positive attitude and was first published in 1937. The very first ever book on positive attitude was entitled Self Help and was written by a man by the name Samuel Smiles, a Scottish doctor in 1859. And according to Success Magazine, that book sold 250,000 copies. I'm talking about way back in 1859. That book sold 250,000 copies. Oliver Sweat Marden launched onto self-help and in 1891 published his pushing to the front, which, according to him, were notes of inspiration and help to strugglers trying to be somebody and do something in the world. That book culminated in his launching of Success Magazine in 1895. According to the editors of Success Magazine, in Success, Merden sought to inspire and uplift, to teach and to hold up models of success as a beacon for others who aspire to be the same. With Success Magazine, Oliver Sweet Merden launched the success movement, otherwise called the self-help movement. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which came out in 1937, literally set the success movement on fire. And the movement has 
never looked back. At the time of Napoleon Hill's death in 1970, it had sold over 20 million copies. The towering figures in this movement, excluding the founder, Merden, and not necessarily in any order, include the early fathers like Del Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, W. Clement Stone, L. Nightingale, Norman Vincent Pearl, Dennis Whitley, Wayne Dyer, and Oak Mandino. Next were the later day followers like Zig Ziglar, Harvey McKay, Jack Canfield, Victor McHanson, Les Brown, and Tony Robbins. With the advent of the internet, a new generation of success gurus led by Brendan Borchard has exploded onto the scene with millions of followers. Donald Trump, the erratic for the fifth president of the United States and real estate mogul is in a class of his own. He is think big and kick ass in business and in life is one of the definitive Bibles of the success movement. Like it or love him, Trump writes on success. The self-help industry, according to The Guardian, is $13.4 billion strong in the U.S. alone, with books in this space such as Chicken Soup for the Soul series selling over a billion copies. The book The Secrets by Rhonda Byrne, published in 2006, and the follow-up film starring Bob Proctor made waves in the world, in the whole world, and was translated or has been translated into 46 languages. The book has sold more than 19 million copies worldwide. The secret is based on one of the several tendencies in the self-help industry called the law of attraction. According to this law, what you think about, you attract. If you think positive thoughts, you attract positive things. The reverse, according to the authors, is also true. Viola, change your thinking, change your life. John C. Maxwell, when Dyer, Daniel Amen, Brian Tracy, and Marilee Adams are some of the more well-known authors that have books on how thinking positive thoughts help change lives. So, my question, does attitude really determine altitude? For the non cognoscenti altitude refers to your level of your monetary success, the height of your achievement glory, and the stupendous or the stupendousness of your wealth. A deep look at some of the most successful people on the planet, whether in politics, sports, academia, business, and entertainment, to mention a few, however, shows no correlation between attitude and success, however defined. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Muhammad Ali, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Michael Jordan, Nelson Mandela, Steve Jobs, William Shakespeare, Bill Gates, Ben Carson, Oprah Winfrey, Mother Teresa, Tony Lumelo, Aliko Dangote, and Richard Branson, to mention a few, are some of the most successful individuals on record. How did each and every one of these individuals achieve stupendous wealth and success? One word, grit. By success, I don't just mean financial wealth because neither Nelson Mandela nor Mother Teresa 
two of the most successful leaders that ever lived were multi-millionaires. So, the one and only ingredient that separates successful people from others is grit, not attitude. By that, I mean hard work, burning the midnight oil, iron determination, standing for something, and sacrifice. Malcolm Gladwell tells us to succeed in any endeavor, you need 10,000 man hours of continued practice. That is about 10 to 20 years in the trenches. 10 years of learning, 10 years of focus, 10 years of faith, 10 years of passion. Yes, 10 years of sacrifice, blood, toil, and sweat are what you need to reach the proverbial tipping point. Attitude is a state of mind of always expecting the best no matter what the world throws on your path. But attitude, that is the software, without hard work, the hardware will not put bread on your table, even if you are a comedian. As a comedian, you have to continually come up with fresh rib crackers, otherwise you will become stale. And that calls for extreme hard work. John H. Johnson of the Ebony Magazine Empire Fame once said, there is no defense against excellence. The boxing maverick, Don King, once said, if you set yourself on fire, the world will come and watch you burn. Don King was talking about passion, zeal, determination to go out and make something out of yourself, not waiting for a dole out, social security, or manner from heaven. So, are you ready for success? Then wake up, put on your running shoes, fold your shirt sleeves, put your hand to the plow, and never look back and the gods of success will show up. Only hard work will see you to the promised land because the maker of all the universe himself said or decreed that he who does not work does not eat. Attitude alone is not enough, my friend. You need a ton of grit to stand on. This is the end of the episode. Stay focused, work hard, because only hard work will see you to the promised land. With you, I mean, when you add smile and good attitude to what you do, you become unconquerable. Until the next episode, keep working, keep striving, keep toiling, and who knows, one day, you'll embrace the gods of success.